It's time to start 2020 properly, and that means used price performance and picking up them deals. Though coming into the new decade, there were some trends that were a little bit worrisome. One of those being Gravis cards. They were simply overpriced, at least last month when I went to check out GTX 1060s, 1050s, 1070s even, everyone wanted way too much, at least compared to the new graphics cards. But that's not a problem because this month I've already circumvented that problem because generally trends don't change very quickly. And so what I've done is I went on eBay and I said this in a few videos during this month and I went and got some 1660 Supers and also some RTX 2060s. So we've already done a preemptive strike on the used price performance scene this month. I don't know if you guys remember Final Fantasy VII and you came into a battle and you had that preemptive strike and you're like, yeah, that's right, I'm a boss. Anyway, with that aside, I am very hungry for some motherboards, i7s, things like that. The core bare bones components as I've got some cases, I've got GPUs and power supplies are generally not a problem because places like Umart and MSY stock them for pretty decent prices. So let's get on good old Gamtree and Facebook Marketplace and see what we can find. And we'll also call Les, as well as a newcomer into the game. They called me, they've wanted to uh, see what deals they can offload to me. So this will be a very interesting month. So the first deal I managed to find and put an offer on was an R9 290. They wanted 110 Aussie, so I put an offer of 90 Aussie. They uh, said one of the display ports at the back doesn't work, but that's not a problem if you've got all the other displays working and as long as it works fine. So that would be a pretty good deal at that price. The next uh, deal that we found was uh, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. They wanted 80 Aussie dollars. I put down an offer of 60 Aussie dollars, waiting for them to get back to me. Great for like a budget build, uh, especially coming into something like an i5-6600 or something like that, and you wanna offer 16 gigabytes of RAM, that definitely constitutes good value too. The next one up here is looking like it's a really dirty PC. Of course, this is my specialty. I can apply some tech, yes, loving, and it's got a nice H55 Zeus motherboard in it and what looks like a pretty solid power supply and a one terabyte hard drive. The RAM and CPU are of low value, but hopefully they take my offer and we can make something out of this build. And then next up, we've got a 1050 Ti. They want 150. I'm putting in an offer of 110 Aussie and then another 1050 Ti as well. Same uh, price point, 150. We put in another offer of 110 for that. And then there was a GTX 1060 for 160. I've dropped down an offer of 125. And then interestingly enough, a Ryzen 9 3900X. They said they've upgraded to a 3950X. It's only for 680, but if I can drop in an offer and get it for 600 Aussie, that'll be a pretty good pickup considering these things go for over 800 Aussie new here in Australia. So yeah, if we get it at 75% of the price that it goes for new, then that's definitely a bargain. Though uh, moving on with some failed offers, I guess. There was a uh, i7-6700, they wanted 200, I put down an offer of 130. They came back and said it just sold. And then there was a GTX 950 where they wanted 80, I put down an offer of 60. They said someone offers them 70, I'm not gonna bother with it. And then there's a GTX 750, which I put down an offer of 40 Aussie dollars. And they're like, can you come pick it up tonight? So it looks like we've got one definite deal here and some potentials out in the air. So we'll have to wait and see if those people come back to us on all the other potentials, but it looks like we've got a GTX 750 so far. They're going through Facebook Marketplace. I found a lot of double listings that were on Gumtree and I've already put offers on them and you don't usually double offer as it does give off a sense of desperation. Uh, so what we found here was a Z97 motherboard as well as an i740-790S. So they wanted 200 Aussie, I've put in an offer of 150 Aussie, and maybe a little bit high, but the motherboard is a good motherboard. It's a solid board that will look good in a build, and that should hopefully help sell the build better than it otherwise would. Otherwise, with a mediocre motherboard, the max out offers like 120, so that motherboard is pretty solid. Though, moving on to the next uh, potential deal is a 4930K. They want 80 Aussie dollars. I put in an offer of 60 Aussie. If we can pick this up, That'll actually be a really nice CPU for the money. Though with those offers out of the way, 
The market is definitely still a vulture pit, I can tell by what's up for sale, where I've got to go high and low to try and find some unique deals. Anyway, it's time to call Les and see what he's got. Hey, Bronnie, how you doing? Yeah, good, mate. How's things? Not too bad. Yeah, it's been a uh, it's been a while, eh? I've been a while. I thought you'd done me. No, <laughs> nah, mate. Just been. I came into New you... Year's. Came into New Year's just with the cloud in my head, eh? And then uh, oh, well. now things are ramping up again. So. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. And uh, so is the used parts, mate. So uh, what have you mm. potentially got for us? Cool. <laughs> what have yeah. I got? Mm, I don't know whether. Um, you, do you use any second gen Lenovo's? Yeah, I can use a few. Yeah, so. I've only got a couple, but no, that's I'll, about all, all I've right. got, man. I'll come through. I've got a, uh, I've got a couple of little Lenovo's, but they're a little late. They're i fives, but they're a little later model. I don't know with with regards to the the power setup. Whether they're called S five hundred, Lenovo S five hundred. What gen are they? Fourth gen. Okay. And yeah, uh, I'll take a look at them. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right, um, yeah. I've got some got some monitors. Depends what you're after. Okay, I'll come and I'll just come and check it out, mate. No, um, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, don't keep me too much after one because yeah. otherwise she's going to jump up and down. Okay, cool, mate. All right, I'll see you then. All right, okay, all good, mate. All right, mate, catch ya. Okay, bye. All right, see ya, bye. So now we've got a quick update and I actually didn't go to Les's place just yet because I uh, called someone who a few months ago dropped off an X79 board and a processor and then I gave them a call before and they said that they had a heap of stuff that they had saved up, it's all untested and they'd do me some really good deals on this stuff. So we're starting here with this. This was an X58 board with no RAM and a power supply and like some really crappy graphics card and stuff. They did this for 50 Aussie dollars. And I said, sure, I'll take the gamble on that. Then we're moving over here to a 1650, I believe, Xeon system. And everything here, I got this for 100 Aussie dollars. And I said, yeah, I'll definitely take that. And then below that was a laptop with an i7 4600U uh, or something like that. They said it works, um, they've tested it but it has no charger or battery, so they did that for 70 Aussie dollars. I was like, yeah, I'll take that too. And then over here is a PC that's definitely seen better days. And this one's a uh, Z87 motherboard. I don't know what CPU it's got in it, but it looks like it's got 16 gigabytes of RAM, GTX 780, and an RM850i power supply. Now, they said there was no signal, so it could be the motherboard that's gone on this, because um, I know these G43s, they did have a tough time back in the day. And so I was guessing that was the problem. And so they did this for a hundred Aussie dollars. And I said, yeah, sure, I'll take that as well. And then we had this one here, the last of the bunch, which was a real lucky dip. Uh, this one didn't turn on at all. So I'm guessing the power supply uh, blew out, but it's a Z77 uh, with 16 gigabytes of RAM, massive D14 cooler. So I'm guessing there's possibly a 3770K under the hood. And this one was again, a hundred Aussie dollars. So I've taken a few gambles here, but I'm figuring like gamble plus gamble plus gamble plus gamble will equal success because I've usually had a lot of success in the past. And to be honest, the guys sold me uh, parts in the past and they've all worked fine. So I was like, yes, definitely. And so I detoured and uh, got all these parts. But what we're gonna do now is go head up to Les's because there's still some parts that I've got on the road. I managed to score the 16 gigabytes of DDR4 for $60. We're gonna go pick up that as well and see what the tech yes situation is.
And now we just got back from this roller coaster of deals and I ended up picking up five 24 inch monitors from Les for about 50 Aussie dollars a pop. He did have some 22s, but I decided the 24s are the cream of the crop. So I went with them. And then we got uh, two Lenovo's, these are second gens. And he did them with a uh, Ram CPU cooler uh, for 70 each a pop. And interestingly enough, he had a keyboard and this was a G710 plus. And I was like, how much do you want for this thing? And he just said 20 bucks. And I mean, it's a little bit dirty, but I'm gonna give it some tech yes loving. And that's essentially a pretty expensive keyboard if I remember correctly, because it's got like uh, mechanical switches in it, possibly Omrons or Browns or something like that. Uh, and then we got this GPU here and I actually messaged someone a while ago about a GTX 960 and they had it up for 80 Aussie dollars and I offered them 60 and they said they would take it. And I said, well, I wasn't coming up for Brisbane uh, for a few days and they said look um your feedback's pretty high uh you look like a decent dude i'll hold it for you and i was like sure thing and i realized it was actually the limited edition one so looks pretty cool and at 60 aussie dollars for a 960 that's a pretty good pickup and then we also picked up that ram the uh, two eight gigabyte sticks of ddr4 memory we ended up getting that for 60 aussie dollars so that's 16 gigabytes so that's a pretty good pickup and then also at Les's, I ended up getting uh, six two terabyte hard drives for 200 Aussie dollars. Uh, so that I desperately need two terabyte hard drives. And since they're like 70 bucks at the stores, I'm getting under half price. So that's always a good deal in my eyes, especially since they're actually higher end models than those entry level models. So I believe there was like a few uh, Western digital purples in there too. So like these ones as well, Western digital purple. So they're actually really high quality. And then underneath that is uh, two PCs. We also picked up at Les's. He said, look, do you uh, have any use for these? He was asking a hundred initially for them. I just said, look, since I'm getting a lot of stuff, uh, what would you want? So one was a Elite, Elite Desk HP. So these are pretty good. They usually work with uh, newer graphics cards too. And it's got an i5 2400. You want a hundred Aussie dollars. I said, look, would you take 80? He said yes, so I can slot a graphics card in that, make it like a budget Fortnite gaming PC. That's a pretty easy pickup. And then beside that was an i7-870 rig and uh, eight gig RAM. So I saw that, I was like, cool, okay. Power supply, all that jazz. He won 100 Aussie dollars. I dropped in 80 and he accepted that too. And then this big one right beside it is actually a different story altogether. I uh, helped someone out setting up their new Ryzen PC and uh, helping them through all the steps and stuff like that. And they just said, look, would you like my old PC? And I said, like, sure thing, man. So I don't even know what's inside this and I'm actually really tired. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna uh, unearth this PC as well as test out those PCs that we got that were untested before and see uh, what the problems are with those PCs tomorrow. And we'll also talk about some of the offers where people came back, I got rejected, but some of the other stuff that got sold as well and possibly even have a look for some more stuff like graphics cards. But man, graphics cards this month and even last month even, it's looking really grim so far in terms of getting a decent deal on used GPUs. But also in terms of Les's stuff, he also quality checks all his stuff before he sells it. So I've never had one problem with the stuff that he said works and it does work. Phone call, Mr. Plankton. And the next day, and the next day, and the next day. It is now the next morning here at the Tech Air Studio and we've opened up this case right here, the mystery box. I was hoping to fire this thing up, but it was like no power supply and so we can't fire it up. Uh, but we do have inside uh, FX, I think it would be an eight core under that water cooler and 32 gigabytes of RAM. So that was the biggest win of this uh, free PC here, 32 gigabytes. So really happy about that. It uh, looks like we've got a graphics card included, but this case as well, after I give it some tech yes loving, this will come up really nice. I think I've done a build in one of these before. Actually a really cool case. I like it. And um, we'll probably just leave the components in there and clean them all up. 
but maybe just put like eight gigabytes of RAM in and a budget power supply and just sort of like flip it as a budget Fortnite gaming PC. So that one's got some potential. I just, I don't think I'll be checking it today due to it having no power supply. Get in there, my two gigabyte friends, get in there. So hard to do RAM with one hand while you're holding the camera with the other. Oh, it did it. GT 640. <laughs> oh, life can be cruel sometimes. And here's our Logitech G710, and after five minutes of some tech, yes, loving, it's now feeling like a brand new keyboard. So now going through the list of offers I put in yesterday and what happened with that, the uh, 3900X guy just never got back to me. Same with the R9 290. Uh, so they mustn't check Gumtree a whole lot. Uh, the GTX 1060 person did get back to me, but they wanted to actually upgrade their GPU. And they were like, look, I'll be on the Gold Coast on the 4th of February or something. So that one's a little bit like, I don't know what's going on with that one. Uh, the 6700 guy sold his 6700 for 150 Aussie. So that was like fair value. Um, 1050 Ti's, there was two of them and they both sold them for 130 each. So that must have been someone looking for GPUs in mass and then just uh, going offering the same money on all these GPUs then going picking them all up at the same time. So. Uh, we missed out on those and then the uh, $150 PC that was just like ready for the tip um, <laughs> I offered 50 bucks on it. I usually never do that But like honestly this thing is from what I see is probably worth about $50 max And so they came back at a hundred and I just said like look I'm taking a gamble at $50 as well because I don't know if it works and If the motherboard or the power supply works, then I'll be breaking even so there was that and I'm waiting for them to get back to me, but I mean, I'm guessing someone will come in now and offer 60, but hey, that's all good. <laughs> Go get it. Um, and then there's the uh, GTX 950. We offered 60, but they came back and said they got another offer of 70. I said, just go with that. Now they've come back to me today and said, oh no, I'm happy to go with 60. And it's like, well, for me, it's like, I was already up in Brisbane yesterday, so that ship sailed. Like I'm, I've already been up in Brisbane, done the parts hunt with all the tour, and gone through and saw Les. So we missed out on that one. Like, well, we're going to miss out on it because I'm not driving to Brisbane. That's like an hour away just for a GTX 950. And what's next is a 750. So um, the 750 guy, he said he'd take the offer, but for $40 for the 750. But then he, uh, I messaged him yesterday on the way up. I was like, yo, uh, address and time. And they just never got back to us. So that was unfortunate too so we ended up picking up that 960 fortunately but looks like with gpus this month as i came into this parts hunt i thought it would be like last month where it's looking really grim especially to get a good deal on a used gpu and that's exactly the case and i've actually looked this morning on facebook marketplace again woke up double checked gumtree as well and there's just no deals like there's people asking over $200 for a 970. And I mean, even 1066 gigabytes, 225 or something like that. I mean, these cards like just way overpriced, especially when you can get new 1660 supers and 1650 supers and stuff like that on eBay sales with brand new for around similar value. Like, huh. anyway, I don't understand the used GPU market right now. So that's why we're kind of like circumventing it on our tour for flipping. But with that flipping aside, let's get back to these used rigs on the desk. The first ones that we got that were untested and start testing them and see what comes out of that. 
And uh, here's the first PC here that we're testing through this bunch that we got unconfirmed. And as soon as we hit the power supply on, I want you guys to listen to this. So that is definitely not a good sound considering the fan is not even spinning. So it's something else inside this power supply that is really wrong. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull all the components out inside and um, then we're gonna see if the motherboard works uh, with some memory in it in the CPU since that is the most, uh, since that's the best prize of this whole PC. I mean, this case here, we could use it for an office PC later, but not a big deal anyway. All right, that is a X58 board that is working absolutely fine. Uh, I'll probably have to change the CMOS battery because it worked after I took that out. And it's got an i7-920 in it, but I'm pretty sure this board can accept a Xeon after a BIOS update. So that is one victory already. And next up on the shelf is this Xeon system that we picked up and the news is really good. That is power supply is working, everything's working, noise isn't too loud and we've got a 1650 Xeon, so six cores, 12 threads, and we've got 16 gigabytes of DDR3 memory inside. Even though it's registered for $100 for this whole setup, that is a steal. Oh, and another thing too with Dells, you gotta look out if they've got the locked BIOS. This one doesn't have a locked BIOS, so that's great news. Sometimes if you get a Dell and they got a locked BIOS, it's pretty hard to get around. You've just gotta hope and pray that your graphics card will work if you're using it for a gaming PC but um, if it basically in the, in the boot order, sometimes to get around that is you'll have to install Windows on another system and then use that disk and transport it over to your Xeon system with the Dell locked bus. But this one doesn't have the locked bus, it's fine. So this is the next PC and this one's the one with no signal. It is indeed giving out no signal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all the parts out for starters since this case is like, there's no way I'm gonna be reusing this case. It's just too far gone, missing panels and stuff. But I do wanna figure out what parts are faulty within this system. Uh, actually looking at it closer, it does look like it could be the GPU since that is some really bad rust on this thing. So regardless though, for 100 Aussie, there's gotta definitely be some goodness in here considering that power supply definitely works. So let's see what's faulty. So we're now onto the motherboard and there's some good news and that is the motherboard and the CPU both work fine. I did have to reseat the CPU however, but I guess there's some bad news, it's an i5-4570. It's like, oh, I was hoping for a 4770K or something, but there is some really good news after that though, and that is this memory I pulled out is 2400 megahertz CL10. And so like, man, I can hear the Xeons in here, the quad channel Xeons just screaming from across the studio like, please Brian, pick me, pick me. So they're thirsty as for this memory here. So that's really good. I could probably use that in an upcoming comparison because that's some of the fastest DDR3 memory I've had come through here with those XMPs. Though, it's finally time now to test that GTX 780 over there and uh, see if that works as well. So this GTX 780 looks like it is not working. It's giving out no signal. We've tried the display port as well, and we've given it a little bit of tech. Yes, loving just a phase one, but that means that maybe this graphics card will be making surprise appearances in a Can Yes Fix It episode in the future. So it's not done just quite yet. So here's the finale right here, and uh, this one indeed does have a busted down power supply. We can kind of see with that light on the motherboard, it's not even lighting up. Usually that'll light up as soon as you turn the power on. So we gonna have to pull this whole thing apart and then see what we can salvage. So perhaps the uh, power supply isn't gone after all because we put the next power supply on and there's absolutely no light at all. So even like a board off this, even if you cleaned it down a lot, if there's just no power to it at all. It means usually means something's just like absolutely gone because that light to come on is like in a low power state. So the fact that it's not coming on at all is pretty worrisome, but hopefully we can pull out some good stuff like that cooler. If I can clean all that up properly, that's a really good pickup. And then the RAM, it looks like we've got four, four gigabyte sticks. 
So hopefully there's an i7 in there and we'll retest that power supply and see if that works. So I'll be damned, the uh, power supply still works. And we can see here, it's reading out all the voltage lines absolutely fine. I've turned it on and off quite a few times. So the only real thing to do is put it to the test uh, in, a, in like a build or something like that and see if it passes. But of course I'll be giving it some proper tech, yes, loving before that. I've already given it just a quick wipe down and man, some of the dirt that came off this stuff is unbelievable. Maybe it wasn't water damage. Maybe it was like a real intense, like heavy smoker. That's like looking like it was the other scenario. So I've cleaned up these Noctua fans. They're okay. And we can see this is like the amount of dirt that came off all this stuff. It's really filthy. But this cooler right here is definitely going to need a bath. I've tried cleaning it down. It's just stuck on. So it's going to need a hot bath to loosen it all up. And I can give it a proper clean after that. So that's like a hot bath pile. But the good news is, is I did pull out a 3770K and that's looking pretty fresh. So it doesn't look like it's damaged at all. And uh, we've also got the 16 gigabytes of RAM. So this one I'd say overall was a pretty good victory. And we are now at the finish line completing this month's parts hunt. And I mean, this has just been a journey this month where we've picked up different PCs, different places. And honestly, pulling those last few PCs apart, I think overall I did win out in terms of value. Uh, it was a little bit disheartening. I wanted that Z77 motherboard to work in the end and I would like to have had an i7 in that rig before it, but the uh, Xeon rig, that checked out perfectly. That was a gamble where everything worked, so that was really good. And then we got some really good power supplies and other stuff out of those other rigs, especially some of that RAM. But besides that, we had that $50 system with the X58 in it, and the board ended up working. The 920, we can replace that with a really cheap Xeon. As you guys know with X58, the hardest thing is always getting the motherboards, and they're usually expensive. So the fact that we got that for like a little over 30 USD, that's a really good deal in itself. So going through the whole tally here, I'll put up a list on the screen for you guys, where it tallied around about 1,310 Aussie dollars, I believe. Uh, it's about 880 USD, and we got like five 24-inch monitors, uh, even a laptop thrown in there, GTX 960, and I'm just blown away by how much stuff we got here this month. I've honestly got to start slowing down. I took a look here in the studio. I'm like, damn, Brian, you got some sort of addiction that needs to be curbed. And uh, even just getting my hands dirty today with some of this stuff and cleaning it up, I, I am pretty excited to start seeing what we can make out of some of these rigs here, uh, though it still leaves a little bit to be desired in terms of some of those deals on Gumtree and Facebook. The place is becoming worse and worse. Like the more I try and get deals on it, the more of a cesspool it's becoming with overpriced stuff, especially on the GPU side of things. Um, I did get a reply on the, I think it was a 4930K where I put in a $60 Aussie offer and they got back to me, but they said they were only available today. And so I went up to Brisbane yesterday and they were, since they were up in Brisbane like an hour away, again, kind of driving up there and wasting all that gas just for one particular part just really doesn't make it worth it, not just in time, but also money spent on gas. Um, and there is a RX 480 and I did find an RX 480 on uh, Gumtree and I put in an offer, I think it was on Facebook Marketplace, sorry. And I put in an offer of $80 and they accepted that. So I'm gonna go pick that up tomorrow morning uh, we've worked out the whole deal. They're actually just down the road too, so it's really convenient for me. And that's another graphics card that I've got. So in total, this month was an absolute success, though I am looking back and I am a little bit tired and exhausted because <laughs> I went pretty hard, but I know that's the way you guys want to see it happen around Tech Air City. Go hard or go home, and that's exactly what we've done here this month. Though with that aside, I do want to know what uh, favorite pickup of the month you guys thought that we got here. And also, if you've got some other ideas or other things you want me to look for, then definitely drop a comment in the comment section below. But I think I'm checking everything for what it's worth, and I am getting really good deals month after month. It's just the GPU situation is just, it keeps creeping up on me and it keeps worrying me because it's getting worse and worse. And I guess that's just the balance where people, the only way I can probably speculate on it is that people are buying new parts perhaps, and their friends already have 1070s and stuff, and they're like, look, go get a 1070 instead of a 1660 Super or something like that. 
and you've got eight gigabytes of VRAM, and that's kind of like the only spec they're looking at on the graphics card, so they think they're actually getting a really good deal when we look at the performance and the efficiency and the new features on the Super, and brand new, I'd, I think anyone who's sort of looking at it objectively would go that route. So I think that's sort of happening in the GPU route, and then you've got the other factor in, and that's there's still those flood of fourth gen office PCs coming in, and you need those used graphics cards or new graphics cards to match them out to make a gaming PC. So that's what I think's happening. If you guys uh, think you know what's happening, then let us know in the comments too. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And speaking of those thoughts and opinions, we have the question of the day, which comes from Wayne. And they ask, uh, so what's the advantage of this low power i9 versus the standard i7? And they're talking about the 9900T engineering sample that we featured in the previous video. I'll put the link up here, where we just had this insanely crazy spec sheet for a PC that came under a thousand bucks. And the 9900T actually surprised me. It was really good power consumption, like 50 watts on load versus 170 watts for a 9900K, for example, at five gigahertz. You are getting two thirds of the speed, but you're getting under one third of the power consumption. So that's the big benefit versus even an i7 8700K or 9700K is that you've got power consumption. You, so you can couple with a cheap motherboard and get away with a cheap cooler and in turn even save more money on things like a power supply. So that's the benefit that brings. Of course, the disadvantage is that um, it's lower clock speeds. So games that are really single threaded heavy, you could see a, a loss of up to like 33% in FPS if you are CPU bound and it's single thread heavy or even if it's multi-core heavy and you're juicing eight core 16 threads. So games like that are really rare. Uh, I think Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p, for example, may be a good example of that, but remains to be seen. We will be doing the comparison. I just need some time here to get <laughs> up to speed with everything. And with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed January starting off the decade for 2020, this parts on, I guess that's the reason it probably went so hard because it's the start of a new decade. And if you enjoyed this one, be sure to hit that like button and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. And as always, if you're enjoying the content and you want to see it the moment it drops and you're not yet subbed, maybe you should consider subbing, ringing that bell and you'll get the content the moment it drops. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.